Hi everyone, welcome to the Basic Science Series by Dr. Lukendra Kumar. I have created this program to promote scientific knowledge among students and young researchers. In this episode, I will explain in detail about a very important technique used in microbiology that is gram staining. The technique was developed by a Danish bacteriologist Hans Christian Gram and this technique was named as gram staining to honor his contribution to science. Gram staining, also called Gram's method, it is a method of bacterial staining which is used to distinguish and classify bacterial species into two large groups, gram positive and gram negative. Let me explain this technique with a very simple example. Suppose you have a petri plate with bacteria in it or a sample of a water or a milk that you want to test for the presence of bacteria and you want to know what kind of bacteria is present in your sample means either gram positive or gram negative first the sample will be fixed on glass slide using bacteriological loop or inoculating loop in combination with gentle heating Inoculating loop is a very simple yet powerful tool to transfer bacterial colonies from one place to another place without any contamination. This is made up of a metallic wire with a loop-like structure at the extreme end. The loop structure helps to pick up the bacterial colonies or the liquid samples with the bacteria in it. First, the loop is sterilized under flame till it becomes red hot. The red hot appearance of a loop indicates that the loop is completely sterile. Transfer a loop full of suspended culture on a slide with the help of inoculating loop. If the culture is to be taken from a petri plate or a slant culture tube, first add a drop or few loopful of water on the slide and then aseptically transfer a minute amount of colony from your petri plate. Note that only a very small of the amount of culture is needed. Now, spread the culture with an inoculation loop to an even thin film over a circle of 1.5 cm in diameter, approximately the size of a dime. Air dry the culture and fix it over a gentle flame while moving the slide in a circular fashion to avoid localized overheating. The applied heat helps the cell adhesion on the glass slide to make possible the subsequent rinsing of the smear with water without significant loss of the culture. Heat can also be applied to facilitate the drying of the smear. Next step is the staining step. Add crystal violet stain over the fixed culture. Let it stand for 10 to 60 seconds for thin smear slide. Pour off the stain and gently rinse the excess stain with a stream of water from plastic water bottle. Note that the objective of this step is to wash off the stain, not the smear. Now, add the iodine solution on the smear enough to cover the fixed culture. Let it stand for 10 to 60 seconds. Pour off the iodine solution and rinse the slide with running water. Shake off the excess water from the surface. Add a few drops of decolorizer so the solution trickles down the slide. Rinse it with the water for 5 seconds. The exact time to stop is when the solvent is no longer colored as it flows over the slide. Further, delay will cause the decolorization of the gram positive cells and the purpose of the staining will be defeated. Counter stain with another staining solution known as basic friction. Solution for 40 to 60 seconds. Wash off the solution with water. Alternatively, the slide may shake to remove the most of the water and air dried. Gram staining differentiate bacteria by the chemical and physical properties of their cell wall. Gram positive cells has a thick layer of peptidoglycan in the cell wall that retains the primary stain that is crystal violet. Gram negative cells have a thinner peptidoglycan layer that allows the crystal violet to wash off. They are stained pink by the counter stain, commonly saffronin or friction. As you can see in the slide that the gram positive cells have a thick cell wall as compared to the gram negative cells. After step one, that is crystal violet staining, both gram positive and gram negative cell acquire the strain and appear as a purple. At this stage, if you look under the microscope, you will not see any difference. 
Now, after decolorization step, gram-negative cells will quickly lose the stain and will appear as colorless. On the other hand, gram-positive cells have a thick cell wall and will not lose the stain and still appear as a purple. If at this stage you incubate the decolorization solution for longer period of time, then both cells will lose the color and the purpose of the staining will be defeated. Therefore, it is very important step. Further, the smear is stained with a counter stain, which is friction or saffronin. Gram negative cells appear as a pink because they get counter stained with the another stain. If you look at a smear with both gram positive and gram negative cell in it, smear will look like this after staining. Gram positive cells will look like purple cells and gram negative cells will look as a pink cells. And we can make initial diagnosis that our sample have either gram positive or gram negative or they contain both kind of cells. Here are a couple of examples of gram positive and gram negative bacterial cells. Common example for gram positive cells include Staphylococcus aureus, Staphylococcus epidermidis, Staphylococcus septophyticus, Streptococcus pyogenes, Streptococcus pneumoniae, Streptococcus mutans, and Streptococcus faecalis. Common example for gram negative cell includes Salmonella typhi, Salmonella typhi murium, Pseudomonas aeruginosa, Proteus mirabilis, Proteus vulgaris, Klebsiella pneumoniae, and E. coli. With this note, I conclude the presentation on gram staining. Please share the presentation with students and young researchers. If you like my work, please subscribe my YouTube channel for the updates and for the next episode. Please forgive my mistakes. Thank you. And